The hall of the grand mansion was bathed in a soft golden light emanating from the elegant chandeliers hanging from the high ceiling. Shadows gently danced on the walls as the candles burned. On the walls, ancient portraits of family members silently observed the guests. Every detail of the decor exuded tradition and wealth, from the Persian carpet under the guests' feet to the elegant grand piano in the corner. The family had gathered, dressed in their finest attire, celebrating another year of prosperity and unity. Rich fabrics, sparkling jewelry, and genuine laughter filled the room. Each family member had a story to tell, and the conversation flowed as easily as the crimson wine filling their glasses. Laughter and cheerful conversations created an almost magical atmosphere. Among the guests was Damon, a man with well-groomed brown hair and a posture that oscillated between confidence and apprehension. His eyes constantly sought approval in the eyes of others. Finding the perfect moment, he stood up, gently tapping his spoon against his glass to get everyone's attention. With all eyes on him, Damon began, I want to propose a toast to this wonderful family that, though not by blood, has opened their hearts and their home to me. In many ways, I feel like I've given my all, as if I were one of you, and I believe that commitment should be recognized, perhaps even in the will. The hall, which had been filled with laughter and conversation until then, plunged into a deafening silence. Muffled murmurs began to spread, like a growing whisper of an impending storm. Expressions ranged from surprise to disdain, with some guests exchanging looks of disbelief. Daisy, a young woman with blonde hair and blue eyes, had a particularly shocked expression. Her eyes, once filled with joy, now widened in disbelief. Daisy and Damon had been together for eight years, and Damon had always inquired about Daisy's earnings who would be the heir, as her father had stated in the will. Those outside the relationship saw that Damon was with Daisy only for her money. It didn't seem like true love because at every possible moment, Damon would bring up everything he had contributed to Daisy's life and how he deserved something in return because nothing in life was free. What would you do in Daisy's place? Would you reprimand Damon? Would you let this embarrassment slide? Leave your comments here. Rising abruptly, she firmly grasped Damon's arm and pulled him to a more secluded corner of the hall. Damon, she whispered urgently, trying to remain calm. What were you thinking when you said something like that? Damon, surprised by her reaction, tried to defend himself, but Dezai interrupted him. The tension between them was palpable, and what should have been a joyful celebration was about to turn into a battlefield. Damon, with his back pressed against the cold, ornate wall of the hall, had a mixed expression of confusion and defensiveness. His eyes, which usually shone with determination, now seemed lost and vulnerable. He took a deep breath, trying to formulate his words, while Daisy stared at him with a blend of disappointment and concern. Daisy, Damon began, his voice trembling. I didn't say that out of malice. Maybe it was imprudent, but I feel like I deserve some kind of recognition. Daisy, arms crossed, responded cautiously. Damon, we're talking about a family here, not a transaction. Damon was quite manipulative, always using his powers of persuasion to get out of Daisy's reprimands. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I know, Daisy, I know but I've always felt like a stranger here. Yes, I don't have the same blood as you all, but I've given my sweat and tears to support this family. Daisy raised an eyebrow, inviting him to continue. Do you remember when you got sick? Damon asked, his voice firmer now. I stayed by your side the whole time. I did it because I love you, and I believe I belong to this family. Daisy swallowed hard, remembering those dark days. Yes, I remember, Damon, but that was your choice. You can't expect rewards for every good deed. Damon looked down, seeming defeated. I just wish they would see me as one of them, Daisy, to see my effort and dedication as more than just an obligation. I feel like I've given my all to this family, 
and moments like this make me wonder if I'll ever truly be accepted. Damon always played the victim, hoping Daisy would give in to his whims. Daisy sighed, approaching and placing her hand on his shoulder. Damon, I see your effort, and I'm grateful for everything you've done. But you can't measure love and acceptance in tangible rewards. Damon nodded slowly, both of them enveloped in reflective silence as the murmur of the hall continued in the background. The way Damon framed their relationship as a deserving item in the will sounded very arrogant and self-serving, but Damon continued to try to defend himself. Daisy, feeling the weight of Damon's words, paused for a moment, looking at him with eyes overflowing with emotion. The chandelier's light illuminated her face, creating shadows that emphasized the seriousness of the moment. She took both of Damon's hands, cold and trembling palms, and squeezed them gently. Damon, she said, her voice soft but firm, I understand your past and all that you've been through. However, love and kindness aren't commodities. They can't be quantified and repaid like a debt. Damon pulled his hands away, his eyes darkening. It's easy for you to say that, he retorted, his voice tense. You grew up surrounded by love, by a caring family. Me? I've always been alone. Every step I took, every decision was a calculation. Everything always had a price. Damon used his lonely past and family abandonment to manipulate Daisy. Daisy looked at him, trying to find the Damon she knew and loved in the depths of those troubled eyes. Damon, I'm not denying your struggle. I acknowledge your scars, but that's exactly the point. The love I offered you, that my family offered you, was never conditional. It was never about what you could give us in return. Damon shook his head, his hair falling disheveled over his forehead. I know I shouldn't, but it's hard for me not to see everything as a transaction. When you have no one to care for you, when you have to fight for every scrap, you start to see the world differently. Daisy approached him, trying to bring the man she knew back from that darkness. But you have someone now, Damon. You have me and that has never come with a price. Damon looked at her, his eyes now glistening with tears. He felt torn between his past pain and the present love that Daisy offered him. I just want to belong, Daisy, he whispered, his voice broken. Daisy wrapped her arms around him, holding him tightly. And you do belong, Damon. But you need to understand that true love doesn't come with price tags. The atmosphere was already tense between Daisai and Damon when the imposing figure of Daisai's father appeared at the entrance of the room. Mr. Hawthorne, a tall man with gray hair and an air of authority, had an aura that commanded respect. His face was a mask of disapproval, and his cold eyes were fixed on Damon like two sharp daggers. It seems I've arrived at an opportune moment, Mr. Hawthorne said, his deep voice resonating in the silent hall. He took a step toward Damon, who involuntarily stepped back. Daisai, trying to defuse the situation, began. Father, it's not what you... But Mr. Hawthorne interrupted her with a hand gesture. No, Daisy. It's time for some truths to come to light. Damon swallowed hard, feeling like a cornered animal. Mr. Hawthorne, I... You what? Plan to use my daughter to enrich yourself? You think I didn't notice your constant inquiries about our assets? The discussions we had about properties and money? Mr. Hawthorne spoke, each word laden with accusation. The room fell into a deathly silence, with other family members watching. Some with expressions of shock, others with sympathetic looks toward Daisai. Damon, struggling to maintain his composure, said, I just wanted to understand our position, wanted to help. Help? Mr. Hawthorne scoffed. You have a strange way of helping, asking about the division of our assets, about the will. Daisy, with teary eyes, looked from her father to Damon. She knew about some of the financial discussions between them, but she had never realized the depth of her father's mistrust. Damon, in a desperate effort, tried to defend himself. I just wanted to secure Daisy's future, wanted to make sure she'd be safe. 
Mr. Hawthorne pointed an accusing finger at Damon. You wanted to secure your own future at my daughter's expense. I saw through you, Damon. Mr. Hawthorne's revelation plunged the room into an even deeper silence, with everyone waiting for the next move in this game of revelations and confrontations. After the argument, Daisy went to reflect on the situation, sitting in the comfort of the worn leather sofa in the living room. She gazed out the window, watching the light rain falling outside. Each drop seemed to echo the tumultuous emotions in her heart. The daemon she had known, the ambitious, affectionate, and always attentive young man, seemed so distant from the man who had just confronted her father about money and property. Lost in her thoughts, she barely noticed the presence of her parents until her mother, Eleanor, sat down beside her and put a comforting arm around her. Mr. Hawthorne, on the other hand, remained standing, looking at the two women in his life with a thoughtful gaze. Eleanor, with her soothing voice, began, Dear, we know how much you love Damon, and we believe he, on some level, loves you too. But, but love isn't always enough, Mr. Hawthorne interjected, his voice filled with concern and sadness. We had our doubts, Daisy. Not out of jealousy or overprotectiveness, but because we observed certain behaviors and attitudes. Days I looked at them, tears welling up in her eyes. Why didn't you ever tell me? Eleanor squeezed her daughter's hand. We thought maybe we were being paranoid, or that it was just cultural or upbringing differences. Mr. Hawthorne added, But after the financial discussions, and now this confrontation, we're worried, Daisy. Worried about what he might be seeking in your relationship. Eleanor continued, Every time you talked about Damon, your eyes sparkled with love and admiration. We didn't want to dim that sparkle, but we also don't want to see you hurt. Desai amidst tears whispered, I just wish he was the man I thought I knew. Mr. Hawthorne moved closer, placing a hand on his daughter's shoulder. Sometimes... We want something to be true so badly that we ignore warning signs. But now, you have a difficult decision ahead. Eleanor continued, her tone gentle and nostalgic. When your father and I met, it wasn't love at first sight, like in the movies. It was a love built, brick by brick, on trust. Mr. Hawthorne smiled, reminiscing. I was an ambitious young man, just like Damon. And to be honest... I made my own mistakes. But one thing I learned early on was that, in a relationship, respect is as crucial as love. Desai leaned in, absorbing every word. Eleanor continued, There were times when we doubted each other, moments when life tested us. But we were always transparent about our intentions. And that, dear, is the foundation of a lasting relationship. Mr. Hawthorne added, on our journey, we've seen many couples fall apart because they hid their true intentions or failed to communicate them. It's a dangerous game, and sooner or later the truth always comes to light. Desai murmured, But how did you know? How were you sure of each other's intentions? Eleanor, holding her daughter's hand, said, By the way we treated each other in tough times, by the decisions we made with each other's well-being in mind, Actions, my dear, speak louder than words. Mr. Hawthorne concluded, What we want you to understand, Daisy, is that a relationship without genuine trust and respect is like a house built on sand. It may seem solid for a while, but eventually it will crumble. They embraced around Daisy, forming a familial hug, conveying the warmth and security that only years of love and understanding can provide. And Desai realized that regardless of the decision she made, she would have her parents' unwavering support. The day was about to come to an end when the door of the Hawthorne mansion was gently knocked. Daisy, still lost in her thoughts, got up from the sofa to answer it. As she opened it, she found Damon, shoulders slumped, eyes downcast, and a bouquet of red roses in his hands, the petals looking as vibrant as his own emotional turmoil. Daisy, he began with a trembling voice, raising the bouquet toward her. I'm so sorry. I... I lost control. She gazed at the flowers, then at his eyes, searching for sincerity. He continued, I let my insecurities and alcohol get the best of me, 
I never meant to hurt you or your family. Before Daisy could respond, the imposing figure of her father appeared in the hallway. He stood beside his daughter, watching Damon with a mixture of disdain and compassion. Damon, Mr. Hawthorne began, his voice firm but not hostile. Falling in love can be an excuse for many things, but it can't be a free pass to betray someone's trust. Damon swallowed hard, the weight of his almost father-in-law's words sinking in. I know, sir, he admitted. I understand if you never want to see me again. I just wanted Daisy to know how deeply I regret this. Mr. Hawthorne stepped a bit closer, his eyes locked on Damon. Life teaches us in many ways, son. Some lessons are harder than others. But remember, once trust is broken, it's almost impossible to rebuild. Damon nodded, his eyes starting to fill with tears. I understand. I just hope that with time you might forgive me. Daisy, emotional and torn, finally spoke. Damon, we had good times, and I will always cherish them. But now it's time for each of us to go our own way. With one last look at Daisy and a respectful nod to Mr. Hawthorne, Damon turned away, leaving behind not only the bouquet, but also a chapter of his life that he would forever regret tarnishing. The next day, as twilight filtered through the curtains, Daisy called Damon to the Hawthorne Mansion's patio to have a private conversation. The place, once the stage for countless laughs and shared moments, would now serve as a witness to a conversation neither of them had ever imagined having. With the night breeze playing with her hair, Daisy looked deep into Damon's eyes. Damon, she began, her voice trembling but determined. We've shared incredible moments together, moments I will cherish for the rest of my life. But, Damon interrupted. Daisy, I know I messed up, and I know words may not mean much now, but... She gently raised a hand, signaling for silence. Let me finish, please. Taking a deep breath, she continued. There was a solid foundation in our love, something I believe to be unshakable. But actions have consequences, and I feel like that foundation was cracked. Damon swallowed hard, his eyes blinking rapidly to contain tears. I never wanted to hurt you, Daisy. You have to believe me. I believe you didn't want to, Damon. But intentions and actions are two different things. The words you said, the decisions you made, they didn't come out of nowhere. They came from somewhere inside you. And that scares me. There was a palpable intensity between them. An electric charge of unspoken emotions. I... I always felt like I had to prove something, Damon confessed. Not just to you or your family, but to myself. I wanted to be worthy of you, and I lost sight of what really mattered. Daisy nodded, her emotions swirling. I understand the insecurity, Damon. We all have our demons. But love isn't a transaction. It can't be weighed or measured. And it certainly isn't something you can demand as payment. For a long moment, the only sound in the patio was the distant murmur of a fountain and the gentle chirping of crickets. Finally, Damon whispered, What do we do now? With a sad yet firm sigh, Daisy replied, We learn, Damon, and we move on, separately. The Hawthorne mansion still echoed with the farewell between Damon and Daisy. The golden rays of the sunset illuminated the hall, casting long shadows on the marble floor. Facing the large window overlooking the garden, Daisy was lost in thought, her eyes fixed on the horizon. Her father, Mr. Hawthorne, watched her from a distance, his expression filled with understanding and a hint of sadness. He approached, putting a comforting arm around her shoulders. My dear... Life is made up of moments, choices, and consequences. She looked at him, her eyes red and swollen, but with a spark of determination. I know, Dad. I just... I thought he was the one, that we were forever. Mr. Hawthorne sighed. Love is complicated, and sometimes the heart wants what it wants even if the mind knows it may be a mistake. She rested her head on his shoulder. How did you know? How do you and mom always seem to make the right choices? 
With a sad smile, he replied, Not always, Daisy. We've made our own mistakes, faced our own demons, but over time, we've learned to listen to our intuition, pay attention to the signs, and, most importantly, recognize when we're on a path that isn't meant for us. She pulled back slightly to look into his eyes. And what do you do when you realize that? He shrugged. Sometimes, you have to find the courage to say goodbye. Even if it hurts. Even if it feels wrong. Because in the end, you have to do what's best for you. And sometimes, the hardest path is the right one to take. She nodded, absorbing his words. Thank you, Dad. I don't know what I would do without you. He pulled her into a tight hug. And I don't know what I would do without you, my dear. Always remember that you are strong, brave, and deserving of the best that life has to offer. The last lights of dusk painted the sky in shades of orange and pink, while birds sang their evening song. In the heart of the extensive Hawthorne Garden, Daisy sat on a wrought iron bench, surrounded by blooming rose bushes. The gentle scent of roses filled the air, and the sound of a nearby fountain created a soothing melody. She caressed a rose in her hand, her fingers delicately brushing the velvety petals. Her eyes, once clouded by a whirlwind of emotions, now shone with a light of determination and introspection. There she was, contemplating her relationship, the advice her parents had given her. She had taken a cold shower and awakened to life. She thought to herself that it didn't always pay off to have a relationship if it literally had a price. Beside her, a familiar figure appeared, her mother, Eleanor, a woman who always had the best advice. It seems like you've had some important lessons recently, my dear. Daisy raised her eyes, meeting her mother's wise gaze. Yes, Mom. Life has a funny way of showing us things when we least expect it. Eleanor nodded, sitting beside her. The heart, as strong as it may be, can be deceived. But what have you learned from all of this? There was a pause as Desai searched for the right words. I've learned the importance of intuition, of not only listening to what my heart says, but also the wisdom of those who care about me. I've realized that loving someone doesn't mean ignoring the signs or compromising my own integrity. Her mother smiled, and that's how it should be. Our experiences, whether good or bad, shape us, strengthen us. The key is to carry the lessons with you. Daisai took a deep breath, the fresh scent of earth and flowers filling her lungs. And above all, I've learned that I need to empower myself, to trust my own wisdom and discernment. I can't rely on another to show me the way. Eleanor put an arm around her daughter's shoulders. You are a strong woman, Daisy. And in time, you'll see that every choice, every step taken, was necessary to shape the incredible person you're becoming. Both sat there, the garden witnessing their moment of connection and reflection, as the night deepened and the stars began to twinkle above them.